Jeremiah chapter 15. Then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, Moses many times stood in as the, as the intermarry between God and Israel. Many times God was angry with Israel. God told Moses of his wrath, and God would step. I mean, Moses would step in. It's even recorded that from the words of Moses that the Lord repented. Samuel would step in with Israel, especially the time it's recorded when Israel wanted a king, that Samuel stepped in. Yet my mind could not be toward this people. If both Moses and Samuel were living right now, around 601 B.C., the time of Jeremiah, and if Moses stood up, stood up before God and said, you know, they're just people, they're just man, Lord, you know, God would tell Moses, I'm not listening. He's told Jeremiah, a man of God like Moses and Samuel, don't even pray for the people. Cast them out of my sight, and that's the people, and let them go forth. It shall come to pass, they say unto thee, Whither shall we go? He just said, Cast them out. Whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, Thus say the Lord, Such as are for death to death, such as are for the sword to the sword, such as are for the famine to the famine, and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. So there is a thing that you can say that God does have for man a way of death and life. There are certain, pe certain people who are going to just die, die, die the death of death. There are going to be some who are going to die by the sword, by war. There are going to be some that are going to die by famine. And there are going to be some that God knows they're going to get captivity. God already sees our life long before we're even born. And I will appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord. The sword to slay, war. The dogs to tear. Now this would be dead bodies. And it can be people who are alive. And the fowls of the heaven. Vultures. Scavenger, and the beast of the earth to devour and destroy. You're not just going to have an army of the Babylonians you're going to be worrying about. The animals are going to go crazy. That's exactly what happens in the tribulation period. Animals are going crazy today. That will cause them to be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. Because of Manasseh, the son of Hezekiah, king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem, and he was the longest reigning king, and he was the wickedest king. And yet he repented and got right with God, but all oh, the sins that Judah did while this king was king. The king may have gotten right, but the nation never did. So you can put a Christian in the White House, give him four years, give him eight years, give him 12 years, and he can pray to God and he can read his Bible, he can make laws, he can do that what's right, being a Bible-believing King James Church. But if the nation's not right, what is the president going to do for the nation? Force laws upon people to do what God, you know, you can't, you can't make a Christian by law. You can't force someone to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. You can't force them to do right. There was a law upon this country at one time that prohibition. This country was dry. There was no liquor. 
And yet there were people that were running liquor. They were making moonshine. They were running it. They were they were uh, breaking the law. Yet for something as good as having no alcohol, there were two people who violated it. Manasseh got right with God, but the nation did not. And they were, their punishment and their judgment was put off because Manasseh got right, but here it comes now. It's coming back. And they've done worse than Manasseh. They have done worse than the people under Manasseh. And now it's the day of vengeance. America is only going to get worse. And it's in the worst state now. For who shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? Who shall be known? Be known is to weep, weep tear thee. Or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? And we get the expression, how you doing? And that expression. And the answer is nobody. Nobody's going to care for, the, for these people. No one's going to step in and try to help them. Matter of fact, those that we, we learned, I believe, one of uh, I think it's Obadiah. That there are Jews that run from from Babylon, they run to Edom, and Edom captures them and turns them over to the Babylonian nation. And in Obadiah, they get rebuked, Edom. And Edom is their brother, Esau. Thou hast forsaken me. It's not God's fault. He warned them, he warned them many times. This is the long suffering of God. Go back and see how many years it's been since Manasseh. Go back and see how long it's been since Samuel. Go back and see how long it's been since Moses. And God is just finally had enough. And yet, he's going to save a raiment. And yet, we're going to read about Daniel. And yet, we're going to read about Ezra. And yet, we're going to read about Nehemiah. And yet, we're going to read about Esther. And yet, we're going to read about Mordecai. If this was a Gentile nation we're reading about these few chapters of Jeremiah, there would have been no Daniel, there would have been no Ezra, there would have been no Nehemiah, there would have been no Mordecai. Look at the Gentile nations that have sinned to the sinner's point. And they're gone. That's what's going to happen to America. You know, all they that were naturalized of Sodom, Gomorrah, and the cities round about were gone. Lot was called out, yeah. But he was of Abraham. And like Lot, the Bible records him being just. And you get men like Daniel that step in, and Ezra who stick to the law, who stick to the word, and God uses them. Thou art gone backward. That's the wrong way to go. Therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee to destroy thee, for I am weary with repenting. They're repenting, but without the heart. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. Oh, forgive me. Your Honor, I'll never do it again. They're repenting because they're caught, but they're not repenting of the heart of sorrow. 
They're saying they're sorry to the people that they've done wrong and they don't care. They'll do it again. And I will fan them with a fan in the gates of the land. And now this is the kind of uh, whittling fan that they did with the wheat harvest. To blow the chaff away, that which is not needed, that which is just junk. The packaging of the wheat. They would bruise the wheat and what would be left would be the kernel and the, the, the chaff would be that packaging of the kernel. And it was so light that God had given it away that you could blow upon it, you can let the wind do it, and the chaff would be blown away, but the seed would drop to the ground. And when you're done whittling, you gather up that which is good, and that which is bad, most, 99% of it, is gone away. He says, I'm going to do that. Listen, when, when you see that this, uh, what do you call it? this threshing floor, that in the Bible is usually judgment. David comes to the threshing floor of, I think it's Arnhem, where he purchased it, where the temple is going to be built. And what was that? That was the judgment of the angel of the Lord smiting the inhabitants of Jerusalem for their sin. Mark well when you see threshing floor in the Bible and this whittling fan. It gets rid of the waste. I will bereave them of children. I will destroy my people since they return not from their ways. That right there, 15.7, return not from their ways. Do you want a not definition of repent? You say, what do you mean? Forget was it anagram something like that that means complete opposite. They return not from their way. That is the opposite of repenting, and that brings judgment. And when you do any kind of public ministry, one on one, street door knocking, whatever, and they do not turn to God, they return not from their way. Their, their widows are increased to me above the sands of the sea. The husbands are dying. And they're dying by a mass rape. I have brought upon them against the mother of the young men a spoiler at noonday. I have caused him to fall upon it suddenly and terrors upon the city. She that has borne seven languishes it. She has, she has given up the ghost, death. Her son is gone down while it is yet day. It's an early death. She hasn't lived her full hours, and yet she dies. She dies before her time. Now we read in verse 2, death to death, and sword to sword. God has a means of what your life is going to get. And yet, in verse 9, you, and there's other verses in the Bible, I'm taking note of as I read the Bible. There are verses in the Bible that you can die before your time. And it's usually from sin. She has been ashamed and confounded, and the residue of them will I deliver to the sword before their enemy, saith the Lord. So this widow, by God taking her life before her life is finished, is going to prevent her from the Babylonian nation. Why did that preacher die so early? Why did that baby die so young? How cruel God is for taking someone young. If God would take this woman who is who's married or was married and let her live, you know what she would do? She would be 
may be tortured. She would have been killed or brought to captivity in Babylon if God had not taken her life. So here is an early death for good. God may have taken your little child for good and no, it's hard, yes. But maybe God knows something about that child that you do not know. This woman would have suffered by an army had God not taken her home early. And that's a hard lesson to learn. For a Christian, death is honorable. It is when you are with the Lord. It pleases the Lord when the saints have gone home. Woe is me, my mother, that thou hast borne me a man of strife. And here's Jeremiah complaining. And a man of contention to the whole earth. <laughs> Oh, the whole earth hates me. And to Jeremiah, yes, but two men. All but two men helped Jeremiah. And he can say the whole earth. His own hometown wanted him dead. I have neither lent on usury, no interest charges, nor men have lent to me on usury. Looks like Jeremiah never borrowed any money. Yet every one of them does curse me. What he's saying is they're cursing me. There's no reason for them to curse me. I have paid my debts. I'm paying my bills. I owe no one. I've got strife. I've got contention. All because of the word of God. And the Lord answers Jeremiah. And the Lord said verily. It shall be well with thy raiment. Verily I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well. In the time of evil. And in the time of affliction. Je Jeremiah 40 verses 1 and 2. When we get to that. The enemy is going to come in the land. He's going to pick up Jeremiah. He's going to wipe the dust off him. He's going to take him out of prison. He's going to give him food. He's going to give him reward. The Lord is reassuring Jeremiah. Listen, Jeremiah. I know it's tough. I know it's hard times. But there are coming better, better days. But before that, there's going to be a time of evil and a time of affliction. You ain't done with it yet, Jeremiah. Why don't you say to me, you know, if you... If you haven't run with the horses yet, I mean, you're weary. If you're in peace and the, and the rivers of Jordan haven't strike up and you're weary, God keeps telling Jeremiah, I'm with you, I'm with you, but it's only going to get worse. What does God say to us Christians that do right? He tells us through Paul, Yea, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. It's only going to get worse before it gets good. Shall iron break the northern iron in the steel? Proverbs 27, 17. Thy substance and thy treasures will I give to the spoil without price. Babylon's going to take it off. Now, in fact, the only thing the Bible records that Babylon does not take is the Ark of the Covenant. That is not in the list. And that for all thy sins, even in all thy borders. Why, why is this all happening or going to happen? Because of the sins. And I will make thee to pass with thy enemies into a land which thou knowest not, Babylon. Jeremiah knows the land. He went all the way up the Euphrates River with, for a girdle. Jeremiah has been there.
I will make thee to pass with thy enemies into a land which thou knowest not. For a fire is kindled in my anger, type of second advent, which shall burn upon you. O Lord, thou knowest. Remember me, Jeremiah speaking, and visit me. Revenge me of my persecutors. These are his brethren. Jeremiah is getting it too. Take me not away in thy long suffering. Know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. He wants revenge. You can't pray for that today in the church age, but Jeremiah can pray for it. He's getting angry how the people are treating him. I, I don't know, but Jeremiah is preaching at the farmer's market, and they start throwing radishes at him. Uh, he's going to pick them up and start throwing them back. He'll get right in their face. And they, they come, and the police will come, you know, you're on, the wrong, you're on the wrong property, this or that. And then he'll go to jail, just like he does. This guy walks up to the king and tells him he's wrong. This guy walks up to the priest and tells him he's wrong. Thy words were found. And I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy rejoicing in my heart. Not the people. You know what joy, you know what peace that Jeremiah had during all this turmoil of the people? God's word. Jeremiah is reading the five books of Moses and whatever books he has in his hands that are available to him. He is reading and hearing from God. That is giving him peace and joy. For I am called by the name of the Lord God of hosts. You rather have the word of God than food. So there are times he fasted and read his Bible. I sat not in the assembly of the mockers. We're going to get into separation again. That's a Bible doctrine. No, you don't want to believe it. If there were mockers, Jeremiah didn't go with them. Nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand. You didn't want to do what God told you to do? I don't want to be with you. For thou hast filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuses to be healed? Wilt thou be altogether unto me as a liar? As waters that fail? That's the kind of condition. I'm trying to read a note here. There's anguish. There's words being said that are not really meant to be said. Like Job. Leave me alone, I can make swallowed on my own spittle. Those guys got him, got him angry. Jeremiah is a type of Job. He's just, he's, you know, the front. Oh, the, well, it's not three people. It's the entire nation. It's three groups of people: the government, the, the priests, and the people. The response. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Calm down, Jeremiah. Relax. If thou return, repent. Then will I bring thee again. And thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vile, thou shalt be as my mouth. And let them, Judah, return unto thee. 
but return not thou unto them. You know who he's talking to? He's talking to Jeremiah. He says, if thou return, then I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me, and thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. That's what Jeremiah is today. Well, when we're reading. Thus saith the Lord, go tell my people. Let them, Judah, return to thee, Jeremiah. Let them come to you, which they don't. Now here's the doctrine of separation. They want to turn to God, they'll come to you. If they don't want to turn to God, they're not going to come to you, Jeremiah. And if they don't turn to God, if they don't get right, they don't come to you. But return not thou unto them. Don't you dare go back to them. If you got people, if you got family who do not serve the Lord, the Bible tells you do not return to them. That is Bible doctrine. It comes down to be steadfast. And Paul writes to the church about flesh versus spirit, that which is good, follow. If, a, if this man does, you're not to have no fellowship with him. If this man does, you're not to be with him. If this man does, you're, you're to kick him out of the church. And the only way you restore back if there is repentance. That is Bible doctrine. And too many people will not follow it. And that's what God tells Jeremiah. I will make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall. Protection. And they shall fight against thee. It's going to get worse. They're not going to turn to you, Jeremiah. Don't you turn back to them. And meanwhile, they're going to make it hard against you. But they shall not prevail against thee. Be steadfast, unmovable. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Now you fall away back to him. God will let you go back in your sins. God will let you go back in your wretched condition. God will let you go back into misery. And he'll let you go back into judgment. Because he warns you. Jeremiah doesn't. And he comes out in chapter 52 as a winner. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. The wicked and the terrible are coming. Be steadfast, unmovable, abounding in the word of God, and standing with your armor on. And Jeremiah, yes, Lord, it's only going to get worse. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's something I really wanted to hear. And who wants to hear that? Who wants to hear it's going to get worse? 